Hi, everyone. Welcome to Escapees webinars. My name is George Ann. I'm the marketing director for Escapees RV Club, and I'm going to be your host for the webinar tonight. We are talking with Chris and Cherie of Technomadia, also of RV Mobile Internet Resource. I believe I got the name right. Um, they are going to give us all kinds of great, useful information about staying connected on the road. Would you guys mind taking a moment to introduce yourselves? Okay. Hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> and I'm Cherie. And we're Technomadia. Uh, we've been on the road since 2006. 11 years now. Wow. Uh, mostly working remotely, uh, software developers and tech advisors. And uh, one of the most popular uh, topics we always covered was how we kept connected to do that. And we kind of turned that into a website. And that's become our main business now. Fantastic. Well, for those of you that have just tuned in the last couple minutes, um, my name is George Ann. I'm going to be the host tonight. However, we're speaking with Chris and Cherie. They'll be presenting lots of information on mobile uh, mobile internet options while you're on the road. I'm going to turn my camera off so that you guys can focus on them, but I'm here in case you have any issues you need to troubleshoot, any questions. And of course, if you have any questions for Chris and Cherie while they're presenting, go ahead and type them into the chat screen you see on the side, and we're going to flag those so that once we get done with their presentation and get to the live Q&A, we'll answer your questions. Thank you, guys. Take it away. Thanks, okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. So for tonight's uh, topic, uh, we wanted to focus on some of our top tips for staying connected if you're working remotely. So each one of these tips and each one of these topics could be an hour-long presentation, and we have done hour-long presentations on them. So this is going to be super condensed, but we're going to try and cover a lot of topics. Okay. Um, if you're working remotely, obviously you're not like a lot of other RVers who are on vacation or retired, in that it's pretty much an essential thing for you to have mobile internet. I'd rather have mobile internet than other electric hookups at a campsite, and I know a lot of people feel the same way. So when you're looking at your mobile internet options, you have to be thinking about what is going to work best at the location you are currently at. And that's, of course, a variable for us RVers because our location's always changing. So we always have people asking us, what is the best option? Give me the, the one thing I should do for mobile internet. And there is no one answer. It is changes everywhere you go. So you're going to really need to consider your travel style. Are you going to big cities? Are you going out in the boonies? Um, are you staying in locations a couple of days or a couple of months? How critical is it for you to be connected for, do you have like work that you have to be on at a meeting every day at 8 a.m. and you've got to stay connected until 5 p.m.? Or can you have breaks in your connectivity? Yeah. Do you have meetings that you have to attend? Um, also, are you doing a lot of video work, large files? Are you having to use VPNs or remote desktops? Are you doing video conferencing back and forth? Um, or are you just kind of getting some text files and working? Those are very different requirements for so, mobile internet. And because of this, this is why there's not one simple answer for everyone. But we'll I, wish you, yeah, we wish I wish it was. Because then we could retire. <laughs> uh, the single thing, the, uh, there is one single thing. There's actually, one rule. And that's redundancy. Don't jump out of an airplane without a reserve parachute and don't try to work online from the road without at least two ways to get online. At least. At least. Two. Oh gosh. Yes. So the first topic that we want to, we're just going to cut right to the chase here, is can you use campground Wi-Fi as a major component of your mobile internet setup? Or, or the Wi-Fi at the McDonald's down the road, or, you know, so many people think Wi-Fi is going to be fast, free, and unlimited, and at best, pick two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for us mobile workers, we generally find that public Wi-Fi hotspots are disappointing, especially if we have high bandwidth needs. Um, especially in campgrounds, you're going to find the connections can be very slow, they can be variable, they can get overloaded. Very overloaded. And you know, a lot of people, for good reason, aren't very comfortable being on a public network with all sorts of random strangers, some of them running Windows XP machines that might be enlisted into the Russian mafia by now. So, so there's a lot of security issues. So if you're dealing with uh, confidential information in your job, maybe medical records yes. or accounting, definitely public Wi-Fi hotspots up the privacy and security level yes. that you need to be aware so, of. So use a VPN, use secure sites and stuff. And but, you, know, you sometimes, you know, we just try to steer people away from campground Wi-Fi. But sometimes you can get lucky, and it is good to have gear on board to take advantage of that if you're in the places where Wi-Fi is 
worthwhile. So where the places it's worthwhile is um, number one, if you're somewhere where none of the cellular carriers are able to get a really decent signal and the campground has invested in the backhaul, or that's the amount of bandwidth coming into the campground uh, to be able to serve the people because they know there's no other options um, or Driveway surfing is my favorite. Yes. Yeah, so when we when we're staying with friends and stuff, and we have the gear, we can be like you know parked on their back forty, like you know way away from their house, and still share in their fast home internet connection. And this is actually where something like this is a Wi-Fi Ranger uh, Elite AC, big honking antenna on your roof, very fast, and that's when we find the most use for the the good long range Wi-Fi gear is when we're tapping into friends. And this sort of stuff can be pricey. Like the Wi-Fi Ranger setup starts at like $700 for this and an interior router. That's a lot of money to invest in for something that you might only find is useful five, maybe 10% yes. of the time in your travels. And, and the test, and we encourage people to do this, is before you invest in Wi-Fi gear, particularly for campgrounds, is do the, just walk up and see how good is the connection if you're sitting right there in the front office. Because people spend a lot of money on the gear and just determine that, well, it didn't get any better. It's like, well, is it good in the front office? Well, no, it's horrible up there too. You can't work miracles. No, no this sort of gear isn't going to make crappy Wi-Fi better, but if you're getting great Wi-Fi and you just need to be a little closer to it, this can help bridge the distance between you and the campground's office. Yep. So that's about the only time we recommend that. Now, cellular is where um, that that is the way we, you know, if you need a connection, bring your connection with you. And here's. Yeah, a lot of us carry cell phones. Yeah. Those are cellular. What cellular data is, is taking basically the same technology that is able to do phone calls. And then there's data that is flowing over it. And most of the carriers offer a data plan that allows you to use that to get your laptops online. Yeah, so you could turn your phone into a hotspot or you can get a dedicated device, a mobile hotspot. Verizon calls them Jetpacks. Novotel's brand name is MiFi. Uh, at t typically calls them like Unites of some sort or another or, or Velocities. But uh, just a mobile hotspot is the general device. And this will take the cellular signal and make a Wi-Fi hotspot out of it. And you can connect usually somewhere between 10 and 15 devices to one of these personal mobile right. hotspots. There's also higher end gear. There's uh, pro level gear that's um, got routers that have Ethernet ports and, you know, a, you know, basically a dedicated device that's got cellular and a router combined together. Um, or you could take one of those and combine it with something like a Wi-Fi Ranger interior router and tether them together over USB. So you can have an inside router and cellular still working that way. And that yeah. gets to Ethernet ports yes. and a stronger Wi-Fi network. Yeah. But more importantly than the gear is, is the plan. finding the right plan. Now, keep in mind, the cellular carriers are not in the business of providing a home Internet replacement. So that old cable connection that we had in our sticks and bricks houses, that's not what the cellular carriers are interested in providing. Yes. So um, the, the big thing is... Uh, People who work online and people who want to stream and be entertained online, they really crave unlimited data. And now unlimited data is back with a vengeance, but it's unlimited on your phone, not necessarily unlimited to a hotspot. And they're really, they're, they don't want you to have your laptops on unlimited, but us RVers, that's exactly what we want. Because we are, we're looking for a home and office internet replacement. Or our smart TVs. We want to binge Netflix nonstop. We don't do that for work. Yeah, this is not work. Actually, that is work for us. <laughs> <laughs> but there's three gotchas that you have to understand about the new unlimited plans. And I'm using the quotes. They're <laughs> unlimited by their definition. But if you know how to work them. <laughs> uh, um, number one, a lot of them have something called network management. That means that if you use more data than the average user, they reserve the right to slow down your connection if you're on a congested tower. And that is the big key if, because a lot of people think, oh, the uh, my carrier says I've only got 22 gigs of data before network management kicks in. But if you're in a rural area, you'll never know. You can use 150. Actually, we're on a connection. We've used 160 gigs right now this month. That's a lot of data. That's a lot of data. And we haven't noticed network management kick in on this connection. Um, in some other places, it might slow you down once you've hit that. And then there's another one is the mobile hotspot tethering restriction. And that's when you're using your smartphone as a mobile hotspot creating a Wi-Fi network, is most of the carriers are putting some sort of restriction on how much of that can be at high-speed usage. Right. Because, again, they don't want you using their data to be a home Internet replacement. Right. So 10 gigabytes is the cap that AT&T and Verizon have on that tethering limit. And in this case, once you hit that 10 gigabytes, it's not only on congested towers. It's always when you're tethering 
you're slowed down to a crawl. Okay, so when you're picking your plans, it's not only about picking the best carrier, but the best carrier to fit your travel style. Right. There, in the U.S., there are four major carriers, <laughs> Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint. And I listed them in the order right. of the size of their current coverage maps. Right. And uh, um, T-Mobile is in third place. They're rising fast. Sprint is way down there. So really think of it, if you're looking for connections, if you're traveling all yeah. over, if you're traveling outside of major <laughs> cities, um, then you just want to skip Sprint. If you are staying in major cities, Sprint may actually be worthwhile because they have some pretty compelling plans. Yeah. But mostly, you're going to be looking at Verizon, AT and T, and keep an eye on T-Mobile. Right. But and you don't want just one. That that is the biggest key. If you, if you rely on internet, having a secondary carrier on board that you can switch to becomes critical so often that um, you, you, know, you might have one that you use 90% of the time, that other 10% of the time, if you work, is essential. Um, so many things can happen on a cellular curtain. It's dependent upon how far you are parked from the carrier's right. tower, right. what your signal strength is, what sort of antennas that you have built into right. your devices, um, and the towers can go down. Right, so there have been times entire cities have lost Verizon, and okay, well, we just switch over to AT&T, or vice versa, and it's so nice to have that, that flexibility. So what I want to uh, give you guys is what are our current top picks for data plans with each of the carriers, but I want to put this caveat on here, especially if you're watching the archive of this later, is this subject to change? This stuff changes all the time. We are constantly tracking these, and they seem to change on a weekly basis. So definitely check back in. We have a website at rvmobileinternet.com. If you go to slash unlimited, that's where usually the best plans are. Um, it's the unlimited plans. You can check there for our current best options. Okay. So, so Verizon. So Verizon um, has these uh, new unlimited plans. You're seeing them advertised continuously. And we just mentioned that they've got that 10 gigabyte tethering limit. So if you're trying to use it for your laptops and TVs and stuff, that's yeah, actually so pretty frustrating. If you just want to watch a lot of video on your phone or tablets, it's great. great for really that. unlimited. And they're even applying, they'll allow you to add a jetpack to your unlimited line, but the it is, they are applying the cap. That's like, tethering that's, limit. But back until 2011, Verizon actually had a truly unlimited data plan that they discontinued, and they continue to grandfather their men. And those plans aren't subject to that 10 gigabyte limit and they're not subject to network management. And because they're so useful, there's been kind of this gray markets that developed about these old plans are still being swapped around, kind of flea market style, and you can still get them. And we've got kind a guide, of. sort of. Kind of, they're, they're tricky to guide. Uh, we have a 20,000 word guide to the options getting for getting them. It is complicated. It is something we're constantly <laughs> updating. Um, but there is an option if you want to look for further into it. There is high risk with them, and Verizon is actively shutting these plans down. So right, it is so something do you your definitely. homework. All right. Yes. For AT and T, uh, you might have heard about the Mobley plan going on. This is a connected car device where you can get a twenty dollars per month unlimited data plan. It's a standalone plan. It's right. phenomenal. It is unfortunately out of stock everywhere. Yeah, it's designed to be only operational when your car is running, but there's little power adapters that keep it going 24 seven. And well, as far as at and is concerned, you're just taking a really long road trip. <laughs> so $20 a month, unlimited, and that's tethering data. That's hotspot data. Yep. There's also another thing out there, it's called the Rural Home Base. This is taking, it's a device that they came out with to be a home internet replacement. And they have a special running right now for a 250 gigabyte plan, which is pretty much unlimited for a lot of us, um, that you can get on. It takes some hoops to get through, and you may only be able to get it if you if your service address or your billing address is in one Certain of their zip codes. Zip codes. Yeah. Um, but that is an option. But AT&T, if you go directly to one of their stores or even order online, they have the best option that you can get as a new customer, and that's their new Unlimited Plus plan, and it's designed for smartphones. Right. So you have to have a phone line. With AT&T. But if you add on one of their jetpacks to it. And not a jetpack when it's AT&T. It's a hot mobile hotspot. If you add on there, like Unite Explore, for $20 a month to your existing uh, Unlimited Plus plan, unlimited. it is not subject to that 10 gigabyte mobile hotspot cap. So it is actually an unlimited plan. It just has network so management. AT&T, two months ago, was one of the worst carriers for unlimited data. Now they are the best. All right. For T-Mobile. Two options that we are tracking right now. Number one is their one 
plus international plan, which you can get for $95 for a single smartphone line. It's a smartphone plan, but that includes unlimited high-speed tethering off of that, um, off your smartphone, which is very useful. Um, they do not offer like a dedicated um, hotspot plan uh, for unlimited. However, if you're interested in something like that, there is a reseller called Millenicom, um, and they do offer a $70 per month unlimited plan that is running on T-Mobile. Yes. And then now over to Sprint, there are some really interesting and very affordable um, kind of plans. Sprint has a deal with some nonprofits that let them resell plans for members of the nonprofits and audiences they serve that get you unlimited data, unlimited hotspots, and some of them are as low as $10 a month. You usually have to pay a year in advance and you end up with a hotspot that is dirt cheap. But it's on Sprint. So it is an option, um, especially as a backup option. Um, most most consumers, the ten dollar month, you do need to be qualified as a low income household. You do have to go through the qualifications. Yeah, some of them, but there is a fourteen dollar per month one that is open to everybody. Yes. All right. Now you got to sell your plan. You got cellular devices. If you're depending on cellular, the quality of your signal is absolutely essential to getting speeds and better performance. And there's two options. And again, these are hour long conversations each. Well. Well, there's three options. So option one is go outside and stand on top of your RV with your hand in the air. That's not a great option. It's fun, it's, though. It's, yes. But we do know times that that's the way yes. you have to get your critical email out. What did you do with my booster? Oh, it's right here. Yes. Ah. Okay, right in front of us. <laughs> First one is using a cellular booster. Right. And you might be familiar with the ones by WeBoost. This is their 4GX. Uh, they have several different versions with different antenna kits. Basically, this uh, you put an antenna on your roof. It routes into this amplifier, and then it has another antenna that retransmits the signal. And now the signal inside is very short range, um, but this way you put your hotspots or your cell phones near the booster inside, and you get a much, much better signal and much better speeds sometimes. So you got there's little tricks and rules to boosters. Go read our, our guides to that, because they don't always help you. Sometimes they slow you down. Um, if you want to learn more about boosters, that's at rvmobileinternet.com slash boosters. Yes. We have a full guide to them with more information on the yeah. pros and cons of them. Now, if you have a device like a mobile hotspot that has antenna ports built antenna in. Antenna ports, double antenna ports in the bottom. That allows you to directly wire in two antennas to them, and that will oftentimes uh, outperform a booster. And that's one of our, our recommended methods for those of us that are depending on cellular, is to go with the two antenna direct wire setup. Yep. And yeah, but what doesn't help you with your phones because most phones, hardly any phones, have antenna ports. So that's a quick overview of cellular signal enhancing. Like I said, each of those topics are an hour long. <laughs> yeah, <you're> right, <laughs> indeed. Okay, so we've talked about Wi Fi, we've talked about cellular. There are some alternate options if those two are not working for you at your current location. And to always keep this in mind is Plan C, even if your other connections aren't getting you online. There's probably some place nearby that will. And we like to find like breweries, cafes, libraries, or you know, some place where you can go out and have a nice lunch and then linger over fast Wi-Fi. It's great. Um, even some places where you might do overnight parking at, like some Walmarts now have Wi-Fi hotspots, and sometimes you can get those from the parking lot. So that's a great way overnight. Yeah. Um, if you're in a city that offers them, uh, if you can find a co-working space, there's places that will rent you a desk for $5 a day and you Usually can go in connection. and super fast internet. So for workers on the road who really need to do a lot of data work, find a co-working space and rent a desk for a day. Um, another option is if you're planning to stay places longer than a month is you can sometimes seek out RV parks and uh, there's sometimes mobile home parks that actually have cable TV run to the site. And if they have that, you can sometimes call the cable company and hook up an internet connection yeah. right to your RV. Get a cable modem. Sometimes they'll get the, the introductory price of like just $19 a month for unlimited internet. Six month introductory price. Well, you're, yeah. you're there two months. Works for me. And, then you're and you can usually just rent the modem from them. Some people actually will buy the modem and carry it, but <laughs> yeah. the different carry, different yeah. cable don't, companies. Don't, don't rent the modem, so buy your own. Yeah, you can usually rent it for a couple, few bucks a month, and then you just turn in the equipment and when then, you're done. And then a very popular topic, and a lot, you get a lot of questions about this, is people who want satellite internet. and the upside of satellite is you really can get connected just about anywhere as long as there's not a tree between you and the southern sky. But there's a lot of downsides to satellite. So we've got a lot of guides and information about this. Mostly it, we talk people out of it except for the people who really need it, in which case it's great. Yes, yeah, so it's, you it's have the no only option. option. It is, there are two mobile options. Yes. Uh, they have a lot of considerations to make. 
I'm going to say this again. <laughs> and again, redundancy is so, so key, especially if you have to be working and you have deliverables and you need to meet up with people online, having Don't multiple put options. All your eggs in one connection basket. And, you know, because things can change by the moment. Uh, you know, sometimes, actually, we've had this happen. There's a big, giant Prevo with metal walls will pull in next to our campsite, and suddenly, oh, the signal went from great to nothing because there's a big metal wall parked <laughs> next to us. Um, go to plan B. Right. Go to plan C. Um, equipment can fail. Um, you could download a firmware update to your hotspot, and it crashes. It makes it unable for you to use yeah. it. Or, um, or, you could roll over it. I mean, we live, we're in RVs. And yeah, we they, know people who've dropped their hot spots in, in lakes and they're like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> or you just might be too far from the signal source to yeah. be able to get what you need. So having multiple options, multiple signal enhancing options to try at each stop. Um, sometimes a booster works best, sometimes antennas yeah, work best. And without trial and error, um, you sometimes just, it, it, you it, don't so know. We consider part of setting up at your campsite is go through your, your, your A, B, and C options and just do a speed test in the speed test on that website or speed test app and just see what are my options so you know what it is. It's just, just like hooking up the electricity. Do a couple speed tests, know your three options. Okay, so aside from the technology, the plans and equipment that you can use, I wanted to share some lifestyle practical tips um, for working on the road and using mobile internet. Number one is what can you do in advance of getting to your campsite to know if you have reasonable odds of getting online. So this is this is your do your research in advance phase. Uh, first of all is check campground reviews. Almost every RVer these days has some interest in keeping online and many reviewers are leaving in their campground reviews what the Wi-Fi was like or what the cellular yeah. signal was like. And this like. is where it's important to look at the date of the reviews too because if it's a more than a year old probably don't get to discount it completely because the cellular carriers have been expanding so much, but it does give you a little bit of chance to do some pretty homework. And one a site in particular that we like is Camp Pendium, and they're working on the road RVers like ourselves who created an RV review site, and they also track boondocking spots and other uh, national forest sites. Um, and they specifically ask the reviewers to report the signal on each of the carriers. So that's one of our favorite sites. Um, there's crowdsourced signal maps. So these are applications like Sensorly, Open Signal, and Route Metrics. So you can bring them up and it'll show you with a little green or yellow whether somebody else is connected in this area. And the problem is it only registers where people have been. So for places our viewers go, often you're kind of a little bit off the beaten path, and we'll see entire sections, entire sections of a state will have nothing in these apps. But it's still, it's a good part of doing your homework is check, pick one of them that's your favorite, check the app. And and then for the our other tip is we actually wrote an app for this. So how many years ago? Gosh, seven years ago, we got frustrated with not being able to know where we were going to be able to get online. So we wrote an app. Its name is Coverage with a question mark. You can find it on iOS and we Android. We just released Android a few months ago. Um, and basically what it does is it overlays the carrier's coverage maps on your device and you can turn on. So I've got AT&T and Verizon, so you can turn them both on. And I've also got it set so that I only am showing LTE or 4G speeds because I'm not roughing it. I don't want no 3G. Yeah, we, yes, <laughs> we, we, we created this as a tool for ourselves and it's, you know, it's, a lot of people have found this to be a very useful So thing. you can uh, zoom in, go down to kind of pick out where your campground is and get a reasonable eye. Now, these are the carrier's maps. Right. Remember, they are part marketing. Yeah. They can yeah. be optimistic. They're, they're very optimistic <laughs> sometimes, but it does at least let you know if there are signals in the air over you. You've got a chance to get it. If there's mm -hmm. nothing showing up there, then you know probably nothing there at all. So um, you can go get that. We yeah. still we keep it up because we, we use, use it, it all the time. time. Yeah. All right. One yeah. more tip, and this is kind of for the sanity of working on the road, because it can be stressful sometimes, of uh, trying to get to your campsite, trying to get set up, and then trying to make sure that you have connectivity when you get there for that webinar that you're trying to present. Yeah. So separate your work days and your driving days. It is, or leave a lot of padding in between so you have time to figure out your plan B and you're not in this panicky stress mode of like, ah, the connection's not there. <laughs> and it can take a while to tweak out what is going to work best. You've got to set up your boosters and your antennas and try at t and Verizon. Try the campground Wi-Fi. And if those don't work, you got to know what your plan B is. Are you yeah. going to go down to Starbucks? You're or are you going to pull out a flagpole and raise up a directional antenna? I mean, bring out the big guns. Or do you need to find a different campsite? Yes. Sometimes just a different campsite in the same campground can make all right. the difference. Yeah, get away from a, a cliff and out into an open <laughs> spot sometimes. Have we mentioned redundancy? <laughs> Maybe yes. we should mention again. Yeah. 
it, 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 it sounds, it, it's just a little bit of thinking, a little bit of preparation and a little bit of being open to, you know, things changing and you might have to, to pull the record. It, it, doesn't have to be stressful, actually. If you just do your homework in advance, it can actually be really easy. And it's, it's working on the road has gotten so simple compared to yeah. years ago. We used to have to go to work uphill both ways <laughs> yes. on, on, slow on two cellular. Jeans. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Hold now. Okay. Um, the other tip is when you're working with other people, if you have the ability to be out about being an RVer, and we know not everyone has that Some flexibility. Some people are in stealth mode. Um, make sure that they realize the, the variability that you're dealing with and that there might be a time when if you're in the middle of a conference call, you might have to stop and switch to a different carrier. Yes. Um, or yeah. that, you know, you might need to reschedule last minute. So right. the more that you can be, have the people that you work with aware of your lifestyle, um, the better and the less stressful it will be for you going if into something it. something suddenly breaks your connection. Whew, did we get that in 20 minutes? Just about. Oh, gosh, that's okay. a lot of content. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just okay. want to mention some of the other resources that we <laughs> offer. If you would like more of a sane pace of overview of mobile internet options, we do have a full overview guide. You can find that at rvmobileinternet.com slash overview. And that goes over the major options for getting online, a lot of the content that we just covered. Uh, and we even have a video to go along yes. with it. Uh, we do track the news constantly. Um, when Verizon comes out with new plans, when there's new equipment that comes out or industry changes, we analyze it specifically yep. for how it impacts us, our viewers. Mm -hmm. And you can find that on the, on the resource center. We have a free monthly newsletter where we recap those news stories. Yes. You can <laughs> sign up for that at rvmobileinternet.com slash subscribe. Yep. And we have now, a new YouTube channel. Yes, so now we're doing, we've, we've separated our Technomadia personal YouTube channel, and now we've got just a dedicated mobile internet resource, a mobile internet info mm -hmm. YouTube channel. And we also have a free discussion group on Facebook. You can find it at Internet for RVers. And that's where you, if you've got questions after this webinar, you can come and ask there, and we'll yes. be happy to direct you where we have a very it. Very active Facebook group. And not to make this a pitch or anything, but we also, we are completely funded by our community. Uh, we do not take sponsorships from manufacturers or carriers. Um, we ditch the advertising and all uh, that. So. so we have a premium membership component. It's called Mobile Internet Aficionados. So it has a Q&A forums, much more in-depth product reviews. You get alert newsletters that will come out to you saying, jump on this offer now. And we saved a lot of people a lot of money and got them in on plans before other people knew about them and stuff. Um, in those Q&A forums, we go a lot deeper with our members. We have product reviews, video tutorials to a lot of the products that we cover. Um, we do monthly webinars with our members. We do the hour long on each of these topics. Yes. Um, and we do have vendor discounts that of uh, uh, vendors who support our community. Yep. Um, escapees and escapers members, we do have a special discount for you for joining as well. And I think it's time to turn it back over to Georgia. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. I am thoroughly impressed that you got all of that in that quickly. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're not red in the face. Good job. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if you guys have been able to watch the chat while you're talking. Probably not because you had a lot to focus on. Um, but we've got a lot of questions lined up for you. So I'm in the interest of keeping things kind of in line with the way you were, you were um, presenting. I'm going to start back at the beginning of the questions so that hopefully we can progress back through some of the information because some of them were more relevant to specific, specific parts versus okay. overall type of information. So, all right. Um, so we have a couple questions from Scott. His first one is what VPN service would you recommend for Apple users when on public Wi-Fi? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, Tough one. First there one. are literally <laughs> thousands of VPN services out there. Um, and the last one that I personally used was ExpressVPN, but I can't particularly endorse one over the other. I did a little bit of homework in picking that out for on a Mac when I was trying to stream Netflix from Canada is how, what the reason I picked that one. Um, um, and then the Wi-Fi Ranger. Yeah. So if you do have a Wi-Fi Ranger, um, Wi-Fi Ranger's got a nice feature built in that they call SafeSurf that you could just press one button and all of your connections on a Wi-Fi Ranger router are put through a VPN and then come out at their servers in Idaho. So that's a simple way to have a VPN for all your devices at once. Um, and that's actually when we feel like we don't trust the network. That's normally our go-to because that's always there. Um, 
and just do your homework and don't wait if you do shop for vpns don't go for the free ones with scammy deals because some vpns are a lot less trustworthy than anybody else you know if the, if the vpn's headquartered in some strange country you don't know of or you can't find out where they're headquartered run away <laughs> And a quick tip for those of you guys who are already Escapees members or are interested in becoming Escapees members, um, Wi-Fi Rangers actually extended a discount offer to our members. You can find it on our website once you log in under the coupons and discount section. Um, so another question we have from Bob, he says, should I expect that my mobile Wi-Fi with antenna will get better cell reception than my mobile phone? It really depends so much on the technology that is inside you know, the antennas that come in your phone and what come in a mobile hotspot can vary from generation. And as far as also what uh, cellular bands it is are a very a Cellular signal enhancing is a very, very complex topic. There's so many variables on it. But yes, more than likely, if you have very compatible technology in your phone and your mobile hotspot, by putting two antennas on this, yes, you should get much, you should get more performance with this with antennas than this without. Yes. Because having antennas on the roof makes a huge difference. I guess. Um, all right. So the question from Jim, is there a way to connect my Verizon jetpack to a router that I can plug other devices into? That's what the Wi-Fi Ranger does. Yeah. Uh, there's Pep also Wave is another brand that does really nice right. routers. So this is just an example. There's also the Pepwave Soho is a similar sort of device, but basically use the USB charging cable that comes with your jetpack. You plug it into here. And, and then the it's got uh, this particular model has gigabit Ethernet ports, and then it will also create an 802.11 AC Wi Fi network. Right. That's awesome. Um, Neil has a suggestion question. I'm, he says he's using video conferencing at least three hours per weekday. What would your recommendations be for? Uh, um, I'm guessing he's asking is what, rec what type of connection, internet supplier, et cetera, would you recommend for a. Um, for not very remote location. Sorry, there we go. Uh, whatever we're, we're works best at your current location. Yeah, so you definitely, if you're doing a lot of video conferencing, you'll you'll need something that is unlimited, and you'll want something that you can get good upload performance out of. Um, you know, if if you're in core urban areas, even in one of those um, Sprint unlimited plans, the the um, donationware ones, the um, nonprofit co companies um, can give you Sprint can have some great speeds in the core areas, but Otherwise, you know, get one of these Verizon limited plans or an AT&T limited plan. Have multiple yeah. options. Yeah. Have signal enhancing, yeah. especially for upload speeds. A booster makes more of a difference right. than sometimes the double the double antennas. Right. Um, it, it's just so variable by location. It's hard to predict what's going to work best yeah. in any one particular location. So you get there and try all the gear you have on board. Yep. Awesome. All right. So Scott has a question that if someone has unlimited AT&T and grandfathered Verizon Unlimited, is it worth it to look into another character, uh, carrier? For example, he does full-time digital marketing for work. Um, Be prepared because those Verizon Unlimited data plans, they are highly volatile right now. And, and Verizon has shut down many of them in the last year. And, and, so. it, and it, it depends on how, how critical working is for you and how much versatility you want as you go out to different cameras like we did a trip through the northeast and through rural maine and vermont and stuff last year and there were times where there were places where we could only get online with att only get online with verizon and only get online with t-mobile so having all three each one of them had certain days that they want out and if we didn't have all three of them we would have had to change our plans or you know you know go to plan c which is go to a brewery or something darn beer and work uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So Jeff has a question about um, leaving jetpacks plugged in 24-7, and I saw there's some more conversation that go, that went on in the chat along with that. So maybe you guys can add, add your two cents. He asks so, if there's any issue with leaving the Verizon jetpack plug, plugged into power 24-7 that he was told by, I guess, someone at Verizon that it does draw data. Oh, oh the, so, well, there's so data the, and there's the, the batteries. batteries. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, so anytime you have a jetpack on, and if any of your devices are connected to it, um, you know, you're you might have a computer that's running an update overnight and is using data on it. There's um, a lot of apps and things that just if they have a if they have a Wi-Fi connection, they just go to town. Sometimes late at night, they will download new screensavers and stuff like that. So, so yeah, if, if you're concerned about your data usage, you know, shut off everything off when you're not monitoring. But the other the other uh, problem with um, leaving one of these jetpacks plugged in 24-7 is they're not designed for it. They are designed to have a battery inside, and that's what you're seeing there. 
and there does and if you leave it charged in most of the time a lot of times these these little guys yeah. don't have the uh, smart battery charging so so over the course of years the batteries might start to swell if you notice your battery swelling replace the battery you know don't chance it that means the battery is starting to fail and bad things can happen but we, I mean, we've run our and we generally keep our jetpacks plugged in 24 7 because we just like having them always <laughs> on first thing when we start up in the morning and we have unlimited plans so we don't have to worry about the data so much um, but so we so we leave them on twenty four seven, and we got we we've had devices go a year and a half or two years without even the slightest hint of a battery swelling. We know other people who've had a battery swell after six months. Um, and then if you have the the devices that are like more high end dedicated router devices, they don't have batteries. They're not portable, and they're designed they're designed for being on twenty four seven. So you're spending more for that, but you get gear that is like that. Like the Pepwave Max PR one is one we highly recommend before. Awesome. Okay, so um, another question from Mike. It's on the Verizon Hotspot 24-7 question. Will it use data even if you're not connected to a computer? Um, well, do you ha has your phone memorized that device's SSID, and is your phone doing an update overnight? I mean, just, it... just the jetpack being on with nothing connected to it, no, does not use... If, it use, if it's using any data, I mean, it's nothing that's going to register. Yeah. Um, it... it Something has to be connected to it and using that data. But but you, a lot of computers will connect in their sleep mode. They'll go download new emails and, and while the phone, while the computer is asleep and stuff like that. So you've got to if if you think that you're not connected, you might actually be connected. So if that's a concern, and if you're on a limited data plan, um, you know, keep things off just so you can keep a closer eye on them. Okay. All right. So Sarah asked, how about the Walmart Pay in Advance phones that use major carrier cell towers? What do you think about those? Oh. <laughs> Hardly any of those prepaid reseller plans that you'll find at Walmart, like Straight Talk and things like that, allow you to use mobile hotspot on your phone. So we don't consider them internet options. They're great for on-device, but um, for as far as mobile internet, um, unless you do all your work on your smartphone, they're not going to do, do you much good. Um, let's see. Oops, skipped over somebody here. Okay. So Ray said he recently installed a WeBoost 4GX using a trucker antenna. What do you... Um, what is your experience with optimizing internal antennas? Okay, so the little candy bar antenna that comes with the boosters, it only really tra retransmits just a couple feet at best. And a lot of people get concerned with that. Number one, the reason for that is, is if it was too much stronger, it runs the risk of the interior signal that's being rebroadcast being picked up by the exterior just, antenna just it's the feedback loop just like if you have a microphone and you walk in front of a speaker you'll get that squeal noise um it's the same thing so the, the internal signal is only designed to go a very short distance um and even even if you are getting a signal further away from that your performance will be so much better up close so we encourage people don't try to get coverage in everywhere inside your rv Leave your hotspot and or your phone right next to the boosters inside antenna and then use a Bluetooth headset if you need to take your phone and take phone calls elsewhere in your RV. Or use Wi-Fi calling on your phone to connect to the Wi-Fi. So what we, we really recommend is focusing on optimizing your data connection and then use Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth to connect to the central source. That way you can focus on it because if you're in a weak signal area, no matter what interior antenna you're using on a booster, it's not going to be able to broadcast very far. Okay. Um, Bill asks, do you have any good information on the brand new 7730 jetpack running multiple protocol channels to the unit from cell towers? Oh, so I, I think they're talking about the um, LTE advanced and carrier aggregation. So the newer cellular devices actually can connect on two and some of them now even three channels at once, which lets them go double or triple speeds, assuming the cell tower is also set up that way. And so the 7730 of uh, Verizon's latest flagship um um, mobile hotspot can support up to three channels at once means for theoretical peak speeds of 450 megabits per second. You won't see that anywhere um, yet, but it does have a lot more future potential as Verizon's network is expanded to support these technologies. So it's a, it's a great way to be future proof. Um, and you'll, you know, in a few areas, you'll start to see that double and extra speeds where you'll have one device go faster than its neighboring device just because it's got that capability. Can the Mobley mini USB port be used for power, antenna, that sort of thing? No, the USB port is only for tethering to a router. Yes. Okay. You still need right. still powered after the plug-in. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Jeff has asked, can you suggest a good brand of external antennas for the Verizon Jetpack? 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of them on the market. Um, yeah, there's a, a, a one we we the two cheap options we recommend. There's get the, two of the Wilson stubbies, the Weeboo stubby antennas, or Netgear has a suction cup antenna um, that's a Nemo antenna, so it's got the two built in that can go on a window and it's got a little bit of a directional focus. Um, and that one's only 20 Yeah, so those are under $30 options. Yeah. You can get much higher gain ones with Mimo built in. Our favorite is by Mobile Mark, and it goes for about $200. Yeah. And that one we get the best performance out of. Awesome. Um, a quick question. Elizabeth wants to know, what is the best way to mirror your phone to your TV? If you have the ability for an HDMI cable out of your smartphone's um, charging port or whatnot, uh, iPhones have a lightning to HDMI adapter, and then you can just do HDMI out. Android it's, phones, it gets more complicated. Yeah, there, there's there's some some Android phones can support that, some can't, but that's the simplest is when you're using a physical wire. When you're using a physical wire, and you're then you're running your phone, it's got Wi-Fi turned off, it's just using cellular data. That's how you can take advantage of these unlimited plans with just a phone and still mm -hmm. have your big screen TV experience. Uh, we have a, a full guide to that at rvmobileinternet.com slash TV for all of our tips and tricks for streaming yes. television. You can get rid of your satellite dish and go straight cellular TV, and it's been working great for a lot of people now. That's awesome. Okay, this one's a little bit lengthier. Um, Claudia is asking, actually, I'm going to read the whole thing to you so I can give you, give you some background information, too. If she doesn't quite understand what a booster, Wi-Fi ranger, et cetera, is, and knows it's, um, she understands it's probably not the best thing for here, but at the same time, she's probably not alone in wondering what some of these things are because we've got about 200 people on here right now. Um, she's asking, is there a resource for her as a rookie when it comes to technology that can help her like with backing up her phone, using her like using a laptop, sorry, a hotspot with her laptop, parks Wi-Fi, that sort of thing, just a really beginner's way to do mobile so internet. Our um, overview guide is written specifically for the basics of mobile internet. It goes over the basics of cellular, it using Wi-Fi. It starts out with the difference between what is Wi-Fi versus cellular. And so that's at rvmobileinternet.com slash overview, and we do have a video, too, that goes along with that one. And that's our starting point for all the content that we have on our website. Yeah, and our, our book also kind of starts at the, at the beginning, too, as yeah. far as yeah. assuming you don't you know. grab a copy of our book? That's right. We've talked about your website quite a bit. I forget that you guys oh, actually have a book, too. <laughs> We, we do offer the mobile internet handbook. You can get it in physical form or e-form. Um, it is 234 pages, and it is written to start from the very basics and then gets more complex as you are ready for it. Um, the book is, says it's the 2016 edition, but when we wrote it, um, we took out all of the stuff that changes, like the plans and the equipment, and we focused more on the theory. So it is still current, even though we made the mistake of calling it the 2016 yes. Um, but it, it is available in PDF, iBooks, Kindle, and also print. And our members, our premium members, get a free copy of the PDF. Like, yeah, it comes with the membership. It's a download book. And considering I saw that, that thing says it's on its fourth release, great job, guys. Apparently, it's been very popular for our viewers. <laughs> so Christian asks, what do you pay a month for Internet with all the options that you have? Okay, so it's really, really unfair to look at our setup because we have three of everything because we test. Yes. Um, so our setup is not ideal to compare what is needed on the road. Um, I can share that if I was choosing out of all the options that we have, what would be our primary setup? Um, we would have our Verizon Unlimited Data Plan, which is one of those legacy plans we pay $45 a month for. Uh, we keep an Unlimited Plus account with AT&T with our smartphones on it and one um, hotspot. One hotspot. Um, it's really hard to say what we pay because we also, one of our tips is we share that with some of our uh, family to cut down the costs. And, um, but I, I would say our portion of that bill is probably about $75 a month. Um, and we, ha we have about 20 other plans, but they're all in our testing setup. So yeah. it's really hard for me to say yeah. <laughs> because... <laughs> And I feel like I have read something from you guys, at least in the last couple of months, I'm not quite sure how current it was, where you did actually explain, okay, this is a, this is what our testing cost is, but this is what it is. Right. Yeah, so it it is on your website. If you want to see our personal mobile internet setup, you can go to technomadia.com slash internet. That's our personal blog. Um, and we try to keep that updated, but because we've, in the last three years, we've transitioned to running RV mobile internet and testing gear. 
So we really don't have a personal setup anymore because we it's, cancel and start new things just to test for people. Does, if people want to know, like, does the Verizon Hum plan allow work good for data? So we go sign up for a Hum plan, we'll use it for a few weeks, and then it cancel. Yeah, so, so our, ours is <laughs> constantly in flex. Ours yeah. is a really bad example. <laughs> good snare. Doug I was Doug was asking earlier to clarify um, that it is hard to find Mobley, but now he said you can't buy it at all. He's, he's, I think he's asking because you made a comment so, that it's not available. Yeah, so the Mobley was um, a an outdated device even when so the plan became available in late February and we've been covering it since then and it's kind of gone viral. Um, a lot of people have already snatched them up and there was a limited supply of the devices and that worked this way. Um, so, so, you know, when you have a $20 per month unlimited data plan, you expect that once it goes, it gets popular, it's going to get sold out. So right. as of for the last two weeks, it has pretty much been out of stock everywhere. Every so often we hear somebody say they found it at a, at a, okay. at a random remote Best Buy or something like that. But it's very hard to find and people are marking it up and reselling it for a lot more than they paid for on eBay. now. Yeah, we're so. seeing on eBay going for three or four hundred dollars and it's a ninety nine dollar. So, so that's why pay attention to when we send out alerts and say yeah, that's <laughs> So our members actually got a two week lead on that before we did the public one. And even it was still available for about two months after that. So, you know, at least make sure you're on our free newsletter and or uh, following <laughs> our Facebook page so that you're, you're alerted to these things um, before they run out, before they run out. <laughs> so a lot of times things run out. Once we do, we do a lot of investigative research and a lot of time keeping, trying to get in the know of deals that are upcoming or special ways to get, um, get data like this. So, we try to get it out. Our members will will always get first alert. So. All right. Um, so Claudia had another question about everything. Um, she's the one that asked about the beginner's information. In the book, do you guys talk about, um, do you have tips for streaming, for example, with Netflix, Hulu, that sort of thing? She has a lot of issues with buffering. Yeah, it, okay. it, it, TV on the road. And then the website version of that is all completely, uh, because so much has changed this in the last year. So we've got a whole new guide to TV on streaming. Um, on the website as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, Charlene asked, she has an Airstream trailer, which we all know that can be fun with the metal sided plate things. Um, what booster would you recommend? I, it really more depends upon what do you need to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, any booster with it, when you live in a metal shell, a bus or an Airstream. A booster becomes very important. Or an antenna, sometimes just an antenna. And it really comes down to is how remote are you going? How important are upload speeds to you? What right. sort of, what options do you, what are you trying to boost right. within? And, and, and this is something we, we have to point out to a lot of people is just as part of your setup is if you do have a booster, try things with and without, because depending on the signal around you, sometimes a booster actually makes you slower Sometimes a booster will vastly speed up your upload speeds, but slow down your download speeds. And sometimes it helps with both. So depending on what your goals are, um, do a speed test with yep. and without the booster and only use it yeah. if you need it. Cellular signal enhancing is very complex. We actually, in March, our member webinar was on cellular signal enhancing. All the different Un ways to under tune your connection. It was on understanding cellular performance and the things that impact it from the technology of your devices to antennas, to boosters, to understanding how to test your signal and if you're actually getting a performance increase. Yeah. And that turned out to be an hour long webinar with an 8,000 word uh, guide, guide that we wrote afterwards. So, um, oh my so, goodness. So, I mean, this <laughs> is really, yeah. we go into the weeds. Yeah, so, so, so. You, so you can start off with really simple. It doesn't have to be super complicated, but for people who rely on the internet and who it's critical for their work, they wanna know, well, what can I do to get a little bit better? What can I do to get a little bit better? So we take you from either the super simple stuff to, oh, if you want to do more, you can try this next and try this next and try this next. Um, well, that is all the questions that we've had for tonight. Thank you guys so much for taking a couple <sighs> extra minutes to get those last few in and for giving us so much information. I mean, it's, it's, there you go. So clearly I was even stumbling over some of the questions that were being asked. So what you guys, the information you guys know is incredibly intense and in detail and fantastic and obviously very useful. So thank you guys so much for doing what you do. Thank, Thank you. you. We, ne we never imagined that um, covering this topic would, number one, be a full-time job, and number two, that there was community support for us uh, to allow us to be so. So we are so, so thankful to our MIAs who fund us and allow us to make this our full-time mission to test gear, to provide the advising and be able to do these sort of outreach. So yes. thank you to our MIA members, for those of you who joined in, and uh, come join us. Yeah. Yes, and also, so we talked about a couple of different escapees discounts along the way. We mentioned the Wi-Fi Ranger one, but also they have very generously, they being Chris and Cherie, extended discount to escapee members 
for their RV mobile internet. Um, I think it's the, is it the book or is it the, the whole membership yeah, program? We have a, a discount code um, off of um, the membership. Um, okay. Members. For escapees members. So the, the membership starts at uh, $57 a year. We try to keep it uh, as reasonable as we can. Um, so yes. That's for everybody, but um, yeah, it's a great community. When you post questions, you not only get our responses, <laughs> yes um and so if you so it's another way you guys can go ahead and support them as well we're very happy to have them on board helping our members and we're happy to reciprocate the help so if you guys are interested if your scapees members are interested in joining go and take advantage of that discount code and join in and contribute to the conversation and if you're one of our uh, followers who are not yet an escapees member they do more than just this webinar. Oh, the they are, they do the this escapees. level of detail on almost every topic related to internet, to, yeah. to um, RV, RV and, life. <laughs> RV life uh, and, you know, if you want this level of content on how to properly inflate your tires, you're going to get it there. Yeah, uh, Thomas, the uh, anything else. So please escapees do join them and support resources. them as well, because it is, they're definitely the community center for, for the, the RV, RV world, lifestyle. Yeah. So. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for that. And also thank you for everything that you guys do. Um, I think at this point we're we're done. If you have anything else you'd like to say before we go, thank you, Georgian, for hosting yes. and asking us to be part of this. And sure. thanks for keeping up with all the techno babble. <laughs> I, I tried. Thank you for reading through the babble. Re reading through <laughs> the stuttering. There we go. See, I can't even talk anymore. <laughs> all right. Well, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you.